Hello, this is um, a little update about how the Eurot has been doing so far, living in the Eurot in winter. Um, we are in the Nomad Town, um, a very young and growing resilience hub uh, in the east of Finland. And I'm going to show you some details about the Eurot. Uh, we had a lot of new snow last night. And as you can see, the snow, especially on the top where there is no wool layer installed, um, the snow is melting and coming down, making really this very beautiful icicles all over. I, I really love it. Small detail, um, I added here just a small loop so that the water drips down here and does not freeze up the lock. So for adjusting the um, the roof cover. Uh, another small detail is my ventilation. So up there is just a pole with a tennis ball attached and I just put it up in there and it's enough to um, keep the ventilation hole open. And for next year I want to work or in the next summer um, I want to uh, work out on a system to to be able to open the hatch, the roof cover um, from the inside without having to go outside. Um, if I go here a little bit, I can. I'm testing in the moment um, a small solar setup called Mobile One. Um, not enough experience yet to really. Be able to judge it. It's based on 3.25 volt. Um, my 12 volt setup doesn't seem to cut it in the moment. Like um, I'm also not really good with this electricity stuff, so there are a few issues um, that I want to look into for harvesting energy. Um, also experimenting with thermoelectric generators and. Um, yeah, wind power might be an option, but it's it's all getting a bit big. So because usually I only use headlamp and the and the phone. So a um, few nights ago we had minus twenty here in the morning, and I'm gonna go inside now, put the headlamp on, and then I show you a little bit about the setup inside. I hope the light is enough. So, yeah, um, yeah I, I have to say I'm a bit surprised, um, like, I don't know, can you see there, maybe if I do the camera like this, so yeah, the Emma is mostly running on, the stove Emma is mostly running on the very small setting. And like when it was minus 20 outside, I could easily have plus 20 here inside. Uh, in between, it was a bit warmer. So well, there's just a few logs in there. Um, yeah, generally, I'm surprised how well the life here works. Um, what I find the most interesting is that I can get by with very little wood so using about a cubic meter of wood per month uh, that's much less than what we used to use in the house where I used to live and yeah um, and I think one of the main roles is or one of the main reasons for this is that um, that the Eurot is cold when I'm not home, so it's everything is set up in a way that the yurt can go completely cold when I'm not home, um, and it also heats up very fast. So it's like if I if I feed only small wood, it's like half an hour, and at the yurt is like 15 degrees. So, but usually around 45 minutes because I don't want to burn just too small wood, and um, yeah, so I have like one or two moments in the day where I have the stove on full power and then just for heating up. And then 
I can also leave the stove quite easily alone. So if I go to the forest or so, then I just um, add a few big woods and get a quite long burn, like of about three hours without having to do anything. Um, now thinking about the extension of the feeding shaft for the rocket stove and to allow like a longer unattended burn. But yeah, very reliable stove um, and this whole combination um, of yeah how everything works. Like the electricity setup is not really there yet. I'm having sometimes go to charge in the library uh, my uh, power banks or so. But other than that, um, everything works quite fine. So water from the well, uh, compost toilet is the humanure, uh, lovable loo system, uh, which is actually here inside. So I don't know if you can see, there is the toilet. Um, yep. And that's also very nice not having to go outside um, if it's if it's really cold or so. And yeah, other than that, it was a good good step. Like I was a bit afraid of the winter and now I see that I should not have been afraid. Um, I think the biggest thing was just to do the step and in terms of reaching resilience, I, th I see there are like a couple of good starting points. Like if you take one survival priority at a time, I started here with shelter um, with the aim to also build community, but basically starting with a compost toilet in a normal apartment is, is a very easy thing. So you just have a, a bucket with a, with a, in a box and um, then you have a compost. You need to take care of some compost, you need to feed, uh, can, can grow food. So, hmm. okay, that was a small update. Um, winter in the nomad town, living in the yurt um, full time. And oh, the reason why you see in the background why I don't have the wool cover on the top. So I have like now up in the top is only tent fabric. So it's very thin. Um, obviously, I have a lot of heat escaping from there. But I really want the light and uh, I will experiment. Um, I have this wool cover for this hole uh, that I can either hang under the crown from inside or attach it to the tent fabric cover, to the crown cover. But it will be a bit darker in here, and in the moment, um, like I have no no issues with like getting really picky on on saving heat and making it all quite tight. But of course, it would be warmer, so I will for sure experiment with it. And um, yeah, so short update from the Europe. Have a good time. Bye bye. Okay.